ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد عليه الصلاه والسلام وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار وبعد ان شاء الله brothers can you please move up so that some brothers can get by for the they can't walk in front of the people who are praying Allah you better fikum and may Allah bless you in the past brothers and sisters from this minbar we have heard the khutbahs on different subjects some of them about speech and silence some of them about knowing the facts some of them about the honor of our brothers and sisters in Islam today we'd like to talk about a specific subject among those subjects and we'd like to give an actual story after mentioning some ayat from Allah's book and some of the authentic hadith from our beloved prophet alayhi salatu salam and i pray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you are listening closely to the story that we're going to present that actually happened this is an actual story before mentioning the story we'd like to mention a hadith from the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam on the authority of uqba ibn amir radiyallahu anhu who said qultu ya rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam man naja man najat he said i said o messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam what is salvation and some of you may be saying well i've heard this khutbah before and i've heard these hadith before but allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says as zikra tanfa'u al-mu'minin that remind of benefits the believers so uqba ibn amir radiyallahu anhu he said ya rasulullah man najatu what is salvation and the prophet alayhi salatu wasalam said amsik lisanak amsik lisanak hold on to or guard your tongue wal yata'ka baytuk and make your house spacious and lastly he said wabki ala khati'atika rawahu tirmidhi and lastly he said and cry or weep over your sins cry or weep over your sins This afternoon inshallah brothers and sisters in Islam we'd like to talk about specifically because we talked about it in general one of those sins of the tongue because this instrument as we have mentioned in the past and we definitely need to reemphasize and reiterate the danger of this particular part of our bodies that the companions of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that if anything needs to be incarcerated the most it is the tongue if anything needs to be locked up the most it is the tongue today we like to specifically talk about two or three different types of sins of the of the tongue and then next week inshallah we like to bring home the same type of action in a positive sense but today inshallah it is the negative aspect of this thing which makes it a sin which is al ghiba al buhd and an namima backbiting slandering and carrying tales 
I remember one day, approximately 14 years ago or more, maybe 16 years ago, I was sitting with one of our imams, one of our sheikhs of this area, Muhammad Hilmi, Hafizahullah. And he was reading to us an article in one of the newspapers in Arabic. It was an article about two young Muslim men. Obviously, may Allah preserve and protect them and forgive them of their sins. Obviously, they made a great mistake. One of the young men was walking through Journal Square and he met a very pretty young lady. This is an actual story. He met a pretty young lady and he talked to the young lady and she led him home to supposedly meet, his fam meet her family. The other brother stood in front of the building. Fifteen minutes went by. A half hour went by. An hour went by. The brother became upset and he became alarmed and worried. He went upstairs because he had known the apartment number. He was told the apartment number. He went upstairs, rang the doorbell, and the young lady's little brother came to the door with blood dripping down his face. Blood on his lips and his tongue, no more than five years old, with a bone in his hand with flesh on the bone. The brother broke into the apartment and found his friend of just an hour before that, body dismembered in pots. They were cooking and eating his body. They were cooking and eating his body. It was some tribe from some place that practiced cannibalism. Now those of you who have just sighed and moaned and said, SubhanAllah, Wallahu Akbar, or whatever you said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in his, book, his glorious book, لا يغتب بعضكم بعضا أَيُحِبُّ أَحَدُكُمْ أَنْ يَأْكُلَ لَحْمًا أَخِيهِ مَيْتًا فَكَرِهْتُمُوهُ وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ إِنَّ اللَّهَ تَوَّابُ الرَّحِيمُ Neither backbite one another. Allah orders us to stay away from this. Would you love to eat the flesh? Would any of you love to eat the flesh of his dead brother? You would abhor it. So abhor the other one, Allah is saying. And keep your duty and fear Allah, for surely Allah is Tawabul Rahim, the one who accepts repentance and the one who is merciful. The way that you felt about somebody you don't even know, whether he was Muslim or not, Allah is giving you this example in His book. So, how in the world, as reprehensible, as abhorrible as this story that you just heard was to your ears, in your heart, into the depths of your very soul? How is it that you can get on the telephone or otherwise and backbite your brother and sister in this land? How is it? Think about this person that came to the door five or six years old with the blood of a Muslim on his lips. Not figuratively, literally. With the literal bone of the brother in his hand and the flesh on his teeth. How in the world, after hearing that and you moan inside, you could go behind your brother after hearing this khutbah or your sister after hearing this khutbah and backbite them. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has already told you, فَكَرَهْتُمُوهُ You would hate it. But in actuality, brothers and sisters, you don't hate it. In actuality, you love it. And the proof that you love it is that you join people, you exhort people, and you encourage people to join you in your backbiting. You invite people to actually talk about someone. Come listen to this while you're backbiting that individual. So brothers and sisters in Islam, today's khutbah is not once again for your entertainment. I'm requesting, I'm begging you in the name of Allah, Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim, that when you leave this khutbah after you say, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah to the left, that you immediately start practicing this virtue of holding your tongue and stay far, far away from this heinous sin that is of the major type of backbiting and slandering and carrying tales. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, إِذَا أَصْبَحَ بْنُ آدَمْ فَإِنَّ الْأَعْضَاءُ كُلَّهَا تُكَفِّرُ اللِّسَانِ وَتَقُولُ أَوْ تَقُولُ 
اتق الله فينا فإنما نحن بك فإن استقمت استقمنا وإن اعتوجت اعتوجنا اعوجنا أبو سعيد الخضري رضي الله عنه سيد that the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said when the son of Adam gets up in the morning and that's all of us that Allah didn't call to die today alhamdulillah when all of you get up the son of Adam the children of Adam no matter what color you may be you're all children of Adam when any one of you of the children of Adam gets up in the morning his body parts request his tongue saying Fear Allah regarding us. Fear Allah regarding the body parts. Because we follow you. We follow what? We follow your tongue. Your body parts follow your tongue. If you are right, we, meaning all the body parts, shall also be right. And if you are crooked and wrong, then you, then all of us, the body parts are crooked and wrong. Brothers and sisters in Islam, we want our body parts to be straight. We want our body parts not to be crooked. And the way that we can do this is to straighten out this little two and a half or three or however many inches piece of flesh that we have between our jaw bones. If we don't straighten it out, brothers and sisters in Islam, then all of our body parts are going to be crooked and we are going to fall into that sin that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes of the major sins in Islam which is al-ghibah saying something about your brother dishonoring your brother in his presence or otherwise if it wasn't true and if it is true then it is worse which is slander the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to give us an example of how riba is he said, Ar-Riba Thalathatun wa Sab'una Baban. Riba consists of 73 categories. Aysaruha mithlu an yankiha ar-rajulu ummahu. Wali'adhu billah. The lowest of the riba, the lowest of the riba, not the worst, the least of the riba, as we've said in many khutbahs and lectures before, is like a man having sex with his own mother. The least. But now look what's worse than having that. Look what's worse than that. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam goes on and says, وَإِنَّ الْأَرْضَ الْرِبَىٰ عِرْضُ الْرَجُلِ الْمُسْلِمِ And the worst, highest meaning the worst type of riba, is to slander the honor of your Muslim brother. Worse than having sex with your own mother. Can you imagine this, brothers and sisters? Can you think of anything worse than that? Just think about it for a while, brothers. Let me be silent for maybe a few seconds. And you think about having sexual intercourse with your own mother. And now that you've thought about that, think about what's worse than that. Slandering your brother. You know the story is not true. Or you may not know the whole story and you carry the tale anyway. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has warned us brothers and sisters in Islam Allah says وَلَا تَقْفُ مَا لَيْسَ لَكَ بِعِي الْعِلْمِ إِنَّ السَّمْعَ وَالْبَطَرْ وَالْفُؤَادِ كُلٌّ عَنْ كُلُّ أُولَئِكَ عَنْهُ مَسْؤُولًا <coughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says do not speak of that which you have no knowledge for surely السَّمْعَ your hearing, your buffer, your sight and your heart all of it all of it you're going to be held responsible for. All of it you're going to be held responsible for, brothers and sisters. So try to incarcerate this tongue, brothers and sisters, and stay far away from al ghiba Stay far away from al buhd slander. Stay far away from carrying tales. It is sufficient proof for a person to be considered a liar that he conveys everything that he hears. This is the statement of the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, brothers and sisters in Islam, He has explained to us on the tongue of His Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said 
لما عرج بي مررت بقوم لهم اظفار من نحاس يخبشون وجوههم وصدورهم فقلت من هؤلاء يا جبريل قال هؤلاء الذين يأكلون اللحوم الناس ويقعون في أعراضهم رواه أبو داود The prophet said on the night of ascension I passed by some people who had copper nails and they were clawing and scratching their faces and their chests The messenger of Allah was shown this horrible scene while making the i'raj the mi'raj when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ascended him Allah showed him some of these things people who had copper nails nails made out of brass and they were clawing their own faces the flesh on their faces and their chest and then he said ya jibril o jibril who are these people And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without even knowing who they are to protect us from this punishment. Who are these people? And he said, they are the people who eat the flesh of human beings and disgrace them. They are the people who make ghibah. They are the people who make slander. But they are the people who talk about their brother and their sister behind their backs and disgrace them whether it is true or not whether it is true or not as the prophet alayhi salatu salam said about those individuals who did this and he said that they have already eaten and I swear by Allah I see the flesh on your teeth this is what the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said brothers and sisters in Islam when you find yourself around somebody Muslim slandering or backbiting their brother, your brother, our brother and sister in Islam, you have the duty to stop them immediately. If you get on the phone, brothers and sisters, and somebody is talking about somebody, and your brother and sister in Islam are absent, then I am asking you and begging you with proof from Allah, which we'll give next week, inshallah ta'ala, that you should use that conference call three-way line and call up that person and say, just a minute, let me put you on hold. And say that again now. Say what you just said about this brother. That's what we should start doing. Immediately practicing it today. From me up, because I'm not so high, from me up to you, all of us, when somebody starts talking about brothers and sisters in your presence, you have the duty to stop them. This is backbiting. You should warn them. Because if you don't, you are part of the crime, brothers and sisters. You are part of this crime. You are part of this major sin that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says you would abhor it. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa salatu wa salam ala rasulihi al-kareem. Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'een wa ba'd. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in his book brothers and sisters in Islam ta'awunu ala al-birri wa taqwa wa la ta'awunu ala al-ismi wa al-udwan help one another in righteousness and piety and do not help one another in sin and transgression this is a direct order from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the first part of this verse and is a direct order from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to stay away from the haram of any sort whatsoever وَلَا تَعَاوَنُوا عَلَى الْعِثْمِ وَالْعُدْوَانِ And do not help one another in sin and transgression. Brothers and sisters in Islam, we have the responsibility to assist each other in all those things that are good and to stop the oppressiveness, the oppression on ourselves and our brothers and sisters in Islam by stopping in its tracks this dangerous sin and disease of backbiting. In addition to this, Those of us who are weak, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us strong. Those of us who put ourselves in compromising positions, not caring about attracting suspicion to ourselves, beware of suspicion. This not only means you being suspicious of your brother and sister in Islam, But this also means we shouldn't put ourselves in a situation where we are made to look suspicious so that individuals can fall into the trap of backbiting us or slandering us. 
We should keep ourselves far away from these situations, brothers and sisters. For as the scholars of this land have said, أَذْوَنُّ غِيبَةُ الْقَوْبِ That suspicion is the backbiting of the heart. That suspicion is the backbiting of the heart. So if you continue to put yourselves in situations which look cloudy, that have shubu hats around them, things that are vague, and you may have been innocent, then you are partially guilty. Because you should have stayed away from anything that would make your character be suspect. So that the person won't be able to fall into the sin of slandering your name and your honor. Brothers and sisters in Islam, those of you who are hearing my voice, I am begging you in the name of Allah to incarcerate your tongues, brothers and sisters. Incarcerate your tongues. Keep your tongues to yourselves. Wabki khati atika. Wabki khati atik. And weep over your sins. Because for surety, brothers and sisters, this tongue is going to get you in trouble. It's going to get you in trouble and it's going to cast you, may Allah forbid, into a hellfire that is a bottomless pit. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep us far away from al ghiba from backbiting. Saying the things about our brother in his absence that if he heard it, he would dislike it. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep us far away from slander. Saying things about our brother and sister that is not true. Things that are just made up that we don't have any knowledge about. And we also ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya Rabb, Ya Rabbana, O oh, our Lord, we ask you to keep us far away from carrying tales. Far away from when we hear certain things in the privacy of our homes or in the offices or wherever we may be, that we don't carry those tales with the niyyah or without the niyyah of causing fitna among the Muslimun. There are some things that are best left unsaid. You don't have to, to carry every tale that you hear. Keep it to yourself sometimes. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward you and cover your sins, those of which nobody knows after him but you. And if you want this, brothers and sisters, stay away from these sins of backbiting and slander and tail carrying. Because these are things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's prophet said. There are three things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hates for you. One of them, he said, was qila wa qal. He said, she said, they said, I heard this, I heard that. Please stay away from it, brothers and sisters. Stay away from this backbiting. Stay away from this slander. Stay away from carrying these tales. Keep your tongues locked up 24 hours, except for the remembrance of Allah, the zikr of Allah, salah, reading Quran, making tasbih, making tamheed, and calling people to the way of la ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها الزوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعض فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار وبعد All praises due to Allah We laud him beseech himself and him we seek forgiveness And we seek the refuge of Allah from the mischievousness of our souls and the wrongdoings of all of our actions Whoever Allah guides, no one can lead him astray. And whoever Allah leaves to be left astray, no one can guide him. And I bear witness that there is nothing worthy of worship as a deity except Allah. He's alone and he has no partners. And I bear witness that Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam is his abd and his rasul. As to what follows, surely the best speech is the book of Allah. 
And the best guidance is the guidance of the Sunnah of Muhammad alayhi salatu salam. And the worst of all affairs are newly invented matters. For every newly invented matter is an innovation. Every innovation is astray and every astray is in the hellfire. Last week, brothers and sisters in Islam, we were talking about this heinous sin of al ghiba of backbiting, and al buht slander, and an namima carrying tales to spread fitna among the Muslims. We'd like to continue on this Jum'ah, inshallah ta'ala, on this particular subject of which all of us should be trying our best to stay away from. As the Prophet alayhi salatu salam said, مَا نَهَيْتُكُمْ عَنْهُ فَاجْتَنِبُوهُ That would have forbidden for you, stay away from, far, far away from it. Some of the causes for al ghiba and al buhd backbiting and slander, are not known to the common Muslim. Shaitan or our nafs whispers to us and causes us and incites us. He prods us. Na'udhu billahi minhu. And we seek refuge with Allah from him. He prods and throws the darts of enmity and hatred into our hearts and makes us fall into this dangerous, heinous, abominable sin of backbiting and slander. To this Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَسَارِعُوا إِلَى مَغْفِرَةٍ مِّن رَبِّكُمْ, من ربكم وَجَنَّةٍ عَرْضُهَا السَّمَاوَاتُ وَالْأَرْضُ أُعِدَّتْ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ And hasten to the forgiveness from your Lord and a garden or Jannah. A Jannah, the extensiveness of it, the wideness of this Jannah of which is, is the distance of the heavens farther than the heavens and the earth. And it is prepared for those who have taqwa. الذين ينفقون في الصراء والضراء والكارمين الغيظ Those who spend benevolently and the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in ease as well as in hardship and those who restrain their anger والكارمين الغيظ والعافين عن الناس والعافين عن الناس والله يحب المحسنين and those who pardon men. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves those who do good. In this particular ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is explaining to us that He loves those of the muhsinun. And He explains to us about those individuals who are the muttaqun, those who fear Allah. And one of the descriptions of them are those who restrain their anger. And one of the causes of backbiting is that the, when an individual becomes angry, he wants to vent his anger and his frustration on someone, he'll talk about them in a bad light. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praises those in this ayah, those who control their anger. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us of those who are able to control our anger and not vent our anger and our frustrations against someone, causing ourselves to backbite them. To this the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, he said in the collection, in the collection of a Tabarani's hadith, the hadith that is collected or narrated by Mu'adh ibn Anas, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, man kabama ghaiban wa huwa qadirun ala an yanfidahu, da'ahu allahu ala ru'us al-khala'iq, hatta yukhayirahu min al-hur al-ayn, yuzawwijuhu minha ma sha. Allahu Akbar. The Messenger of Allah alayhi salatu wasalam said, Whoever represses or restrains his anger, and he is able to carry it out. مَنْ كَذَمَ الْغَيْضَ وَقَوَ هُوَ قَادِرٌ عَلَىٰ أَنْ يُنْفِذَهُ Whoever controls his anger, when he had the ability to vent it, whoever controls his anger, when he had the ability to let it loose, Allah will call him before all the creation to make him choose from among the Hur al Ain. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will call him in front of all of the creation and allow him to have those wide eyed, voluptuous women that are waiting for the men in Jannah. Allahu Akbar. Just for controlling your anger when you had the ability to let it loose. And for the women who are wondering what they're going to get, they're going to get their husbands, inshallah. <laughs> and then the Prophet ﷺ said, 
يزوجه منها ما شاء and marry him to any one of them that he, the person chooses the person who restrained their anger when they had the ability to let it loose Allah will not just give him a hur al he'll allow him to choose any one of them that he wants subhanallah one of the other causes of backbiting which is this heinous sin that we want for all of us to pay close attention to is compromising and supporting one's friends. Sometimes we fall into camps and groups and if an individual did something to another individual and he doesn't like it or if an individual backbit someone or slandered someone or did some type of haram in front of someone's presence then that person may enjoin in the good and forbidden the evil by correcting that individual in their face. Then that individual becomes shy or ashamed because of what they did because a group of individuals started opposing them. So as a means to not fall into the bad graces of that individual or to get on the you-know-what list with those individuals, that person will support the individual in their wrong. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has already told us, Help one another in righteousness and piety and do not help one another in sin and transgression. We cannot fall, we should not fall into the sin of backbiting brothers and sisters just to please someone who's standing in front of you because you're afraid of that person. The Prophet sallallahu said, مَنْ أَرُضَ النَّاسَ بِسَخْتِ اللَّهِ وَكَلَهُ اللَّهُ إِلَى النَّاسِ وَمَنْ أَسْخَطَ النَّاسَ بِرِضَ اللَّهِ مُؤْنَنَةَ النَّاسِ The Prophet said, He who seeks the pleasure of the people by the displeasure of Allah those who seek to please the human beings at the displeasure of Allah, making Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala displeased, trying to please somebody of the creation, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will entrust him to them. Those individuals who you try to please and you are displeasing Allah, Allah will leave those people to be a trust for you on the day of resurrection. And whoever seeks the pleasure of Allah, by the displeasure of the people, Allah will suffice him of the need of the people. In another narration, whoever tries to please the people at the displeasure of Allah, Allah will make them be attrusted to him. And whoever tries to please Allah at the displeasure of the people, Allah will cause the people to be pleased with him and he will be pleased with them. Anytime you find yourself, as an added note, you go to see about a job, and the woman who's the supervisor sticks out her hand to shake her hand, to shake your hand. Refuse a hand, brothers. And you women who are forced to work, likewise. When the man sticks his hand out to shake your hand, you should not shake his hand, fearing that Allah won't be able to provide for you. Make that person displeased, and Allah will be pleased with you, and make the people be pleased with you. Another cause of backbiting among the Muslimun, is elevating one person's position by criticizing another person. Some people, which we call dry snitching. Those of you who have been in prison, you know what I'm talking about. They call this dry snitching. You talk about somebody else in a good light and debase another person by way of, of lifting up that other person. This is backbiting, brothers and sisters in Islam. Even though you didn't directly talk about this individual, you raised this position of this person, and in the light of the other person, you have debased them. This is backbiting, and we should stay far away from it. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam giving us an example of another form of backbiting of those individuals who use backbiting as a tool or as a joke, telling jokes on people, even though they're not true. And some people go to the point where they get paid for this. Stand in front of the people and tell lies on people. Backbite and slander people just to make money. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, وَيْلُ لِلَّذِي يُحَدِّثُ فَيَكْذِبْ لِيَضْحَكَ بِهِ الْقَوْمِ وَيْلٌ لَهُ وَيْلٌ لَهُ He said, woe to the one who lies when he talks to the people to make him laugh through backbiting. Woe to him, woe to him. And another example or reason why people backbite is envy. 
envy, jealousy, backbiting someone because you wish that they didn't have what Allah gave them. Or you wish that they would lose what Allah gave them and you wish that He would give it to you so you backbite that person due to the jealousy that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is trying to keep out of your hearts and shaitan is trying to induce you with and prod you to be a part of. Another example of the causes of backbiting is to prove one's innocence from what was attributed to him by relating the accusation to the guilty person, thinking that this is the correct way to do it. Or to mention someone else as a conspirator in the action that was a wrongdoing, and then they say, he also did this, or she also did that. All of these are forms of backbiting. And also, the person who may not have nothing to do with it at all, or the person who was close to the person who did it, you make them a party in that by backbiting that individual also. Or sometimes we don't mention the person's name, but we say he's that real tall brother who weighs, who weighs 260 pounds and has those black sneakers and the green car. You didn't say his name, but everybody knows who the brother is that's that tall with that much weight with that color sneakers and car. You think you're getting slick and saying you're not backbiting, but everybody knows who you're talking about. All of this is backbiting, brothers and sisters, in Islam. And we should stay far away from it. Another way is to be angry at somebody for the sake of Allah because of some wrong that he's committed, but angrily, in your good intention, you declare that wrong, and then you mention the person's name while his name should be concealed, or her name should be concealed of what they were doing so that you can avoid the backbiting. And also, out of a good intention, Shaitan will cause you out of a good niyyah, out of a pure niyyah in your heart, because of your grief or sorrow for a person, because of something that has happened to him, so you express your feelings that was, expressed, that was done wrongly to that individual and you say out of your love for that individual and your grief and your sorrow for that individual that so-and-so did this to so-and-so or this was done to so-and-so and then you back bit that individual who did it. And the Prophet Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says فَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ خَيْرًا يَرَهُ وَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ شَرًّا يَرَهُ In every atom of good you do, you shall see the like of it and every atom of evil, or atoms made of evil you do, you should see the like of it also. Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa salat wa salam ala rasulihi al-kareem. Sayyidina wa nabiyyina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa ashabi ajma'een. Wa ba. Another cause of backbiting brothers and sisters in Islam is using backbiting as a way to fill the emptiness that, a, that an individual has and to remove boredom. Some people, they get bored, they don't have anything to do, so they just start making up things, either true or untrue about an individual, just because they don't have anything else to do. The treatment for this, brothers and sisters in Islam, is to spend our time in the zikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and increasing our ibadah, increasing our worship. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's Prophet said, لا تزالوا قدم ابن آدم يوم القيامة من عند ربه حتى يقال عن خمس that the feet of the son of Adam all of us, the children of Adam will not be removed from the possession of his Lord on the day of judgment until he will be asked about five things عن عمره فيما أثناه how did he spend his life did you spend your life backbiting people if you add up all the times you backbit in the past ten years some of us, unfortunately, will probably come up with a whole year total of backbiting. Think about this, brothers. Think about this, brothers and sisters. How did you spend your life? You spent your life backbiting. And then the next of the five, the Prophet Wasallam said, وَعَنْ شَبَابِهِ فِيمَا أَبْلَى And how did he spend his youth? Some of you children, some of you youth that are right now talking, leaning back there, chewing that gum, some of you talk about each other and you don't care, you backbite, you slander, Allah is going to ask you, how did you spend your youth? Did you spend your youth while the Imam was giving the khutbah, chewing gum, leaning up against the wall, sleeping, playing games? Or did you spend your youth trying to learn about this deen so you can become a productive adult? And then the Prophet ﷺ said, 
وعن ماله من أين اكتسبه from where did he earn his money did he earn his money in the haram way or did he earn his money in the halal way did she earn her money by backbiting people to get her earnings from, from, from the, her earnings or did she use her, her, her livelihood in a halal way then the Prophet sallallahu said after saying and where he earned his money and how fima anfaqahu how he spent it and lastly وَمَاذَا عَمَلَ فِيمَا عَلِمَ and how did he use the knowledge that he learned the knowledge that he or she learned how did they use it how did they implement it all of these things brothers and sisters are things that we need to take notice of we need to pay close attention to these things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger has told us sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and try to stay far away from this heinous sin and lastly but definitely not least getting close to a person's employer getting close to your employer by degrading other employees in order to get promoted or to get a better position so you backbite the other individual because you know he's up for the job too so you talk about that individual in a bad light so that the person can look at you and elevate you or promote you to the next position all of this is haram brothers and sisters in Islam and Allah knows best Allah only knows best and I don't if backbiting is haram to the kuffar too only Allah knows and I don't if backbiting is haram on the kuffar too and this doesn't mean that you can't call them a kafir because if they're kafir they're kafir but as far as backbiting only Allah knows if this pertains to the kuffar too as for those cases in which it is permissible as the scholars of Islam say that censorship is not backbiting in six things these are the times in which a person says something bad about a person behind their back and it's mashroor it's legal listen to them very closely brothers and sisters and all of these things have to be accompanied with a good pure unadulterated intention you just can't say that I'm doing this with a bad intention the first is a report for the redress of some injustice or some wrong or some tyranny or some high-handedness in such case an oppressed person can petition the king or the qadi or the imam or the sheikh or somebody in authority against a person who has pe perpetrated such tyranny secondly to seek some help to stop some practice or work which may be against the principles of the deen of Islam thirdly to seek a fatwa or a ruling on some specific topic from a qualified person in authority fourthly to caution the Muslims from the evil consequences of some mischief fifthly if somebody indulges in evil practices openly as for example zina or open drinkingly, drinking openly of liquor or using some type of khamar like crack or reefer or bad treatment of people or cheating people in their jobs or usurpation of their property or imposition and collection of taxes with cruelty then a person can come with this which would normally be backbiting and it would be praiseworthy and lastly to introduce somebody when such a person is already known with such nicknames like lame deaf blind squint-eyed etc if someone is already known by that then it's okay in this particular case his introduction will be halal but to use such a word in order to humiliate someone is haram according to the scholars of Islam if he can be introduced in another manner brothers and sisters in Islam we should stay far far away from backbiting and slander and far away from namima the Prophet والسلام, said لا يدخل الجنة النمام the person who spreads namima tales to cause fitna among the Muslims will not enter paradise just because you're not backbiting just because you're not slandering it doesn't mean that you'll be admitted into Jannah if you carry tales some of us hear things in private and we go outside where those things should have been held inside and the secrecy and the privacy of where it was mentioned we go out with the pure with the clean with the intention of spreading fitna among the people when that story could have been incarcerated could have been held at bay but rather we go out namam 
and spread these things among the Muslims to cause fitna and dissension and rancor and hatred. Allah's Prophet said, لا يدخل الجنة النمام The Namam will not enter Jannah. The person who takes some information that was said privately, he goes out and he spreads these things to cause fitna and dissension. We should stay far away from these things, brothers and sisters, as we said last week. And in the past, the thing that needs to be incarcerated the most is our tongues. We should try with all our level best to keep our tongues purified. When you find yourself getting ready to talk about somebody bad, remember the hadith of the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, مَنْ كَانَ يُؤْمِنُ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ فَلْيَقُلْ خَيْرٌ أَوْ لِيَصْمُقْ Whoever believes in Allah on the last day, let him speak good or keep silent. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us of those individuals who are able to keep our tongues purified from backbiting. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us of those who keep our tongues pure from slander. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep our tongues pure from an namima. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us of those who enjoin in the good and forbid in the evil when injustice is being done. When tyranny is being done, that we don't use those other principles, but we use the principles of speaking out against the wrong, even against a tyrannical imam, no matter who it is. That we speak out, and Allah fill our hearts with the courage to speak out and stop a wrong when we see it with our hands, and then if we're not able, with our tongues, and if not that, then to hate it in our hearts, which is the weakest of iman. رَبَّنَا آتِنَا فِي الدُّنْيَا حَسْنَةً وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ حَسْنَةً وَقِينَ عَذَابِ النَّارِ رَبَّنَا لَا تُعَخِذْنَا إِنْ نَسِينَا أَوْ أَخْطَأْنَا رَبَّنَا وَلَا تَحْمِلْ عَلَيْنَا إِسْرًا كَمَا حَمَلْتَهُ عَلَى الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِنَا رَبَّنَا وَلَا تُحَمِّلْنَا مَا لَا طَاقَةَ لَنَا بِهِ وَاعْفُ عَنَّا وَاغْفِرْ لَنَا وَارْحَمْنَا أَنْتَ مَوْلَانَا فَانْصُرْنَا عَلَى الْقَوْمِ الْكَافِرِينَ Before we end this khutbah, brothers and sisters in Islam, I'd like to make a reminder of what we said the other night after the class, more specifically to the women. Some of you women have been coming to classes and coming to Jum'ah and you have these conversations among yourselves and you're disturbing people and you're losing the reward, you're losing the blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He wants to bestow on you. Some of you come to Jum'ah, some of you women, and it's not obligatory for you to come in the first place and you're disturbing the women who want to listen to the khutbah or you disturb the people, the women who want to listen to the classes so that they may get closer to Allah. I'm taking this time again to remind you women to keep your mouth shut. When you come to these classes, be quiet. If you can't do that, go home. Go home, go home. This place is the house of Allah. It is for the remembrance of Allah. It is not for backbiting. It is not for slander. It is not for namima, tail carrying. It is not for gossiping. If you're not here to learn and make zikr of Allah, stay home as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in his book, وَقَرَنَ فِي بُيُوتِكُنَّ Stay in your homes. It's better for you. It's better for you. So if you women keep coming to the masjid on Jumu'ah or any other time for classes or whatever, when instruction is being given, we're going to ask you to leave. And we have the right to do so because of the sanctity of the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala.